contact with the European people was in 1805 when they first saw the Lewis and Clark and their companies and obviously seeing them they were different their skins were different their clothing was different uh, the body structures were different and our people were not hostile people here so we accepted them in respect and we honored them to help them on their way. Largely, we helped them with their foods, their commodities, because our elders saw that they were struggling in exploring uh, these lands. Historically, we've been always fighting with Tatmish, even though they centrally located it on reservation. But we always argue with the city hall, the, their city council. They don't follow your... They're very line. prejudiced against Indians, even Yakima Indians. They don't realize that they're right here in the center of Yakima. That's a, that's a traditional place, uh, it's across mm -hmm. to Tatmish Creek. J'ai toujours été intéressé par la culture amérindienne depuis le plus longtemps que je me souvienne. C'était ancré dans moi. J'ai décidé de bouger au Canada. Ça fait environ quatre ans maintenant. J'ai passé trois années à Montréal où j'ai acquis ma citoyenneté. Et maintenant, j'habite en Colombie-Britannique, à Burnaby. Pourquoi habiter en Colombie-Britannique, me diriez-vous Simplement parce que j'ai voulu me rapprocher de ma famille autochtone qui habite dans l'État de Washington. Peut-être un beau jour, j'arriverai à bouger jusqu'aux États-Unis, qui sait. Mais changer de pays, déjà, pour moi, ça a été très difficile parce que, bon, je ne suis pas d'un tempérament très voyageur, honnêtement. Mais euh, ça a toujours été cette force, vraiment cette force au fond de moi qui m'a poussé à faire tout ça. Parce que le fait d'avoir déjà bougé de France... Arrivé au Québec. Pour moi, ça a été tout un changement. J'ai dû me remettre en question. À Montréal, j'étais bien. Mais il manquait, comme en France encore, ce, ce, cette pulsion-là de, de, de me sentir vraiment au mieux de ma forme, au mieux de moi-même. Donc, ceci explique pourquoi j'ai dû encore déménager une seconde fois pour arriver en Colombie-Britannique. Et là, en Colombie-Britannique, je me stabilise actuellement. Je commence à me sentir extrêmement bien parce que je sais que je suis de moins en moins loin de ma famille Yakma. I see him as a, a Frenchman, but yet I see him as a, a white man. In my heart, I accepted him into our home. He was a stranger to this land, that he was from France. And I begin to understand uh, his curiosity that uh, I that contributed to all of my teachings to him, show him what the traditions were. And it wasn't easy. It was very hard to have him accept us as well. There was both ways, as he needed to understand us and he needed to. Uh, have the patience and, and to want to learn from us. 
Yeah. And knowing the limitations of our languages, we had a hard time communicating. But yet, that was part of uh, the patience that we have. Hey, <laughs> see. Jean became their big brother to talk to the boys, explain to them about his country. And I told Jean, I said, I want, I want my children to know more than there's just a reservation here to live here. The gold rushes came. The settlements came. They started settling, claiming lands. And not being used of that or knowing those kind of turf problems, our people, obviously, they retaliated. And so rose the conflicts, wars, killings. Until the government of the United States in the 1850s pursued to settle down the wars, they started making peace treaties. And they confederated 14 tribes into one nation, forcefully. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Happy to be home. Happy to be home. So you're going to show me some nice painting? Yeah, these are some of the more recent paintings oh, yeah? that help uh, oh. illustrate the hops and the many wow. harvesting that we used to do. They are very big, yeah? Wow. Yeah, it's a large one. Wow, this nice painting. Yeah, this is uh, the big one here, oh. which helps it, uh, illustrate the two mountains. Yeah, Mount from Adams. The, this is the uh, oh, Columbia right. River, oh, yeah. and right square is Mount Hood. Mount Hood, yeah, and then after you cross over into the reservation side, That's you can Patu. see Toppenish and then Patu. You can still see how the transportation is taking place both sides, not only by the settlers, but the native people, how they cross back and forth. Yeah, they're using horses, huh? They use horses, but now today we use cars. Yes. <laughs> the methods are all the same. In exchange of taking our lands, they would provide the necessary things to live with, such as schools to start learning the English, the churches, and they forced the Yakma people to the Christianity ways. They wanted to educate us like they were, so they forced us. À force d'avoir lu et étudié pas mal la culture amérindienne, ce que je voulais vraiment plus profondément, c'est de rencontrer des autochtones qui vivaient en 1990 ou 88. Donc voir l'autre côté de la médaille, de tout ce qu'on a pu nous montrer au cinéma, par Hollywood ou dans les livres qui ne sont plus vrais. Bon, la part histoire est très importante. Mais il faut s'apercevoir aussi qu'il existe toujours des Autochtones qui habitent aux États-Unis et au Canada et qui vivent sans plumes, sans que ce temps-là est fini. Jean wrote a letter first, then Monique responded. And then Jean just kept writing letters back and forth. And then um, he came when he was 16 and he had a 17th birthday here. So we watched him, where he was coming from, from his heart, not as a person of different color. 
he worked very hard. He says, I was a box boy. I took groceries out. I did this and I did that. I saved all my money to come. And I started to see that groweth in his heart. And I asked him, Jean, I said, why do you want to come here? Bon, c'est vrai que j'ai décidé de choisir la nation Yakima parce que c'était une nation que je connaissais pas très bien. Puis j'ai eu la chance que l'ONI soit au conseil tribal et reçoive ma lettre au départ. Il m'a répondu très gentiment. Si j'ai décidé de venir là, c'était surtout vis-à-vis -vis du monde autochtone, pas forcément des Yakima. Mais depuis que j'ai intégré la communauté Yakima, c'est sûr que je suis très intéressé par la valeur la spiritualité yakma. Mais de toute façon, quand on regarde de très loin, que ce soit yakma, opi, zuni, abenaki, on en revient toujours à la même chose. Le respect de soi-même, le respect des autres et le partage. C'est simple. Et c'est ça que j'ai trouvé ici. It's our ways. When a visitor comes or a good friend and you begin to relate yourself uh, as more than just a friend, then you, you see them in our language as a, as a son or as a daughter. Adopting him as a son and calling him my son was a, just a natural part of, of uh, our relationship. qu'ils ont toujours été fiers que je vienne de France. Et puis simplement d'allier dans le perlage les trois couleurs de mon drapeau national, ça m'a fait quelque chose parce qu'ils savent très bien qu'il y a toujours une partie de moi qui restera française. Et c'est comme ça qu'ils m'aiment aussi. La spiritualité dans le monde autochtone, spécialement ici, est basée sur un rapport toujours de confiance et d'échange. Quand j'arrive ici, je découvre une certaine relation entre la nature, les gens. Qu'est-ce qu'elle nous apporte, la nature Ça, c'est spirituel. C'est vrai, en France, j'allais ramasser des champignons, mais j'ai jamais eu cet état d'esprit-là. Là, on remercie, quand je vais ramasser de la, des baies, on remercie la nature de nous donner ce cadeau. Je me sens complètement épanoui quand je suis ici. Par la simplicité des lieux, la simplicité des gens. Et puis c'est comme ma deuxième maison. En étant fils adoptif de leader spirituel chez les Yakima, ça, cela apporte des responsabilités. Ces responsabilités, je les prends vraiment à plein cœur et je suis vraiment content d'avoir la responsabilité de travailler et de les aider. It's my hope that I can let people know and to be comfortable with our culture. And I want my people to be comfortable, to their needs to be met, and that they're understood, that they're not, people don't still think we live in teepees and we don't scalp people, you know. I want them to be comfortable. Ça m'arrive des fois d'être de, en contradiction avec moi-même, dans le sens que, avec l'éducation que j'ai reçue, puis ce qu'ils me disent ou ce que je dois faire, c'est sûr que ça rentre un peu en choc comme ça. Mais j'arrive à faire rentrer leur conception de la vie avec l'éducation que j'ai reçue. Je fais un mixage de tout ça, puis j'arrive à ressortir euh, bien. In our ways, the sweat lodge is a place to pray. It's a place to humble the creations and to prepare ourselves for a better tomorrow and for whatever may be in front of us.
Ces gens-là ne font jamais de cassure entre la vie et la mort. Nous sommes sur cette terre, c'est une étape seulement. Et toute la spiritualité, les cérémonies sont basées sur ce passage, sur la préparation, comment passer à l'autre étape quand on en va mourir. Pourquoi ça m'a tant fasciné C'est simple, c'est parce qu'en Europe, la mort c'est tabou. On n'en parle jamais, quand ça arrive c'est la catastrophe. Ce que j'ai moi, ce qui ça en étant là-bas, ce que ça m'a permis de faire et de dépasser dans, dans moi-même, c'est d'essayer d'arriver déjà un peu plus à cerner la mort, à comprendre que ce que l'on fait là, c'est un passage. Ça va nous aider, ça va nous servir pour une autre vie plus tard. I know many times it frustrated him, and especially when we bring him to uh, ceremonies. And I tell him, you'd have to be patient. Maybe you won't understand it right away, but as time goes along, as you grow, you will understand. Yes. Oh, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Just as long as you're not standing there naked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I put this on the plastic. Okay. Maybe, maybe I can uh, save time. We can have the boys just stop by for breakfast at McDonald's. So we can be oh, over there. Ready? Ready to what? To go. 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 When I brought him around, I knew I had to keep him close by so he wouldn't wander off uh, to the other people because our people are still uh, sensitive and more protective uh, to exploitation of non-Indians. In this community of Autochtones, especially in what concerns the spirituality, the people are very closed. Et n'apprécie pas forcément de voir arriver un blanc ou qui que ce soit d'étranger à leur cercle. Ça, c'est vrai. Mais maintenant, je pense que depuis dix ans, là, beaucoup de gens ont appris à me connaître et me connaissent. Donc, il n'y a plus aucun problème. Non, j'ai jamais senti aucun, aucun sentiment de gêne ou de ou d'être de, mis à l'écart. Non, jamais. There's really no word for love in our language is something we show. And I know that Gene sees our love, otherwise he would never always come back. Not all the people accept him. And those that don't, they respect my choice to adopt him and to bring him around. Wrap it. It grows so fast. Never mm, had time yeah. to grow. I see him as my son. I try to look past color because I think if I let color and only color, you know, then I lose the love that people have. And they have something, whatever comes from their country or their life, they can share with you. Ça leur est venu naturellement de me donner un nom, parce que c'est dans leur culture. Je ne leur ai pas demandé au départ. Moi, j'étais heureux comme ça, je veux dire. Mais pour eux, vu que je fais, je fais vraiment partie de la famille, que j'ai mes responsabilités ici, avec mes frères, ma sœur maintenant, Loni, Teresa, pour eux, c'était naturel de me donner un nom indien officiel, parce que c'est culturel. Et c'est traditionnel parce qu'ils me considèrent comme leur fils, un de leurs fils. Ça, je l'ai su dès mon premier voyage. Mais c'était ma place, mon endroit, que j'avais toujours cherché. Je suis compris comme je suis. Et comme je l'ai dit souvent, je ne suis pas un autochtone, je ne le serai jamais. 
Et je fais pas ça pour personne, je le fais uniquement pour moi. We danced with our younger, younger children. It's just like they grew together. He sweats. We took him to the sweat house first thing to clean him off, and ever since then he's been sweating. He likes to sweat. Real hot. <laughs> But throughout the years, he's he's been communicating back and forth. Uh, he had to do uh, what was necessary for him to complete in France. Uh, that's mandatory that they serve in the armed services. Uh, he had to go back and do that, and at the same time complete his education. He's a certified public accountant. It's not common for any person to get an Indian name. There are many instances where elders have accepted white people and they honored their help by giving them an Indian name. And I try to think of a name for him that would fit him. Uh, and the only thing I could think of is what he was. He was a Frenchman and he's a redheaded. <laughs> so I come up with that name and today I'm gonna officially give it to him so that he would be known from this day forward as Lutza Alaima. So today this is Lutza Alaima, Jean Bittaz. Uh, each and every one of you, will, if you see him around, you see him in different places, you run into him, you can call him by that Indian name. He'll know it, Lutza Alaima. I give him the name so that we can identify him and he'll be known for that, not only by us, but by our children. I would like to call up on Kip and Ladine Albert. He's gotten to know them quite a bit. He sweat with them and... We were hugging him when he got his Indian name. Oh my, you're, you're officially now my grandson. You know, you're officially now my... My nephew. <laughs> Grandma Vladim. <laughs> I trust him. That's that's why we gave him a name. It's the trust that we built with him. When Jean first came around and they got to know each other. Okay, uh, is anybody here about this size? You can come up here and strip him down. We told him that that was a part of our tradition when when he was gonna get his name, uh, that uh, you get stripped down as well. I don't know if he's got anything on underneath. She might be a little small. <laughs> no, I, I took a lot. I took a lot. What can I keep on you? Yeah, I think and so. You know, this is the only time I'm going to do it. <laughs> Remember, you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> okay, that one takes this part on the Tzala Lima. It's officially known as the red-headed Frenchman now. Uh, he got five dollars from Irma to the Tzala Lima. Okay. Okay. There's fifteen dollars to Lutsa Lima, she said, buy buy clothes. <laughs>
Ah.